This video ranks the top 10 NBA Big 3s entering the 21-22 season. The Lakers' acquisition of Westbrook will make Braun, AD, and Russ a force to be reckoned with, but are they better than KD, Harden, and Kyrie? Stay tuned to see where the Lakers and Nets trios rank among the best in basketball. Before continuing, Laker fans, Nets fans, whoever you are watching this video, let's be friends. Follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops for highlights, polls, and channel updates that trust me you can't miss. Links in the description for that, but let's get into the content. Number 10, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Tobias Harris. You'd think an MVP candidate in Embiid, a 20-point scorer in Harris, and an all-NBA first-team defender in back-to-back -back years in Simmons would rank higher. Philly's trio had the fourth highest net rating among 85 three-man lineups who played at least 800 minutes. It's not a lack of continuity that ranks them this low, but more so a lack of playoff success and underwhelming performances from Ben Simmons who passed up shots at the rim and shot a playoff worst 34.2% from the line. I know Embiid and Harris played extremely well in the playoffs and throughout the season, Philadelphia's trio led them to the first seed in their conference, but if Simmons makes his free throws, the Sixers would have easily made the East Finals. Instead, Simmons let the fucking team down, which heavily lowered the value of Philly's big three, at least in my opinion. We know Simmons is better than that, but until he bounces back, this quote unquote trio can't rank any higher. I'll now patiently await the Sixers and Ben Simmons to prove me wrong. I have not more to fucking say to you guys, and if you don't like it, I don't need you here. Number 9, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Nikola Vucevic. The pickup of Vucevic at the trade deadline and now DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, and the GOAT Alex Caruso has given Chicago one of the most talented cores in the NBA. Reigning first-time All-Star, an efficient 27-point scorer Zach Levine, who's never reached the playoffs, has finally received the care package he'd been looking for. I'm predicting the former Magic player Nikola Vucevic finally gets the name recognition he's deserved for a while, playing next to a premier passer in Lonzo Ball and two underrated passers in DeRozan and Levine, Nikola is going to thrive spacing the floor out. On separate teams, Zach and DeMar alone combined for 11.8 assists last year, and Chicago will likely get around 70 points and 15 assists each game out of Levine, Vucevic, and DeRozan. Not many three-man lineups can compete with that. Number eight, Trey Young, John Collins, and Clint Capella. The team that took down the number 10 ranked Sixers trio was led by the stone cold villain Ice Trey, the Atlanta Hawks. Viciously hated by any team's fan base he played against. Personally, I was in awe of Young's clutchness, once in a lifetime performances, and straight swagger. He ended up struggling against the Bucks' defense in the conference finals, but who didn't? In his first playoffs, though, Trey's 29.9.5 dime averages and stone cold daggers to take down New York and Philly was very respectable. You're goddamn right. Collins and Capella are Trey's screen setters, and while there's some overlap in their games given they both thrive off rolling to the basket, the offensive development of Collins lessens the front court's redundancy. Collins has made 40% of his threes since the start of 2019-20. Also, Capella ranked fourth in the NBA in blocks per game. Number seven, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, and Mike Conley. The Utah Jazz had a ton of success in the later half of the 2010s, drafting their franchise player for the next decade in D. Mitch, internally developing a three-time defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, and in 2019's offseason, signing the most underrated point guard in basketball, Mike Conley, was right up there with those aforementioned Utah stepping stones. Problem is, for the two years he's been in Utah, Conley's been extremely injury prone and therefore lowers the value of Salt Lake City's big three. Mike put up a total of five points on one for eight shooting in the conference semifinals. He only played that game because the Jazz were down 3-2 to a Clipper team without Kawhi Leonard and Conley looked completely injured. We know his capabilities at full strength. We saw that throughout his time in Memphis, but for Mitchell, Gobert, and Conley to rank higher on next year's trio ranking, it's crucial their veteran point guard stays healthy. Number six, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Kyle Lowry. K Lau's going to South Beach, and the pairing he'll form with Adebayo and Butler 
should make every game a sellout at American Airlines Arena. Having been there for Game 6 of the 2016 East Semis, as a Raptor fan, I know how insanely loud that building gets. As a road fan, I was shook after Lowry and my Raps lost that game because that crowd was loud as hell. Now the Bulldogs on the Heat, which still doesn't seem right to me, but I'm happy for Heat fans along with Jimmy and Bam, who are getting the best hustle player in the league and a top 10 point guard in North Philly's finest, Kyle Lowry. Number five, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. I feel really bad for CP3 after coming up two wins short of getting his first ring, but because of their four straight losses to a generationally great Bucks team, people now undervalue how good Paul, Booker, and Ayton are. Yes, they faced teams that were missing top scoring options, but they took care of business in those matchups with the two LA teams and Denver Nuggets fairly easily. Paul's aging, so I guess that's why Bleacher Report disrespectfully ranked the West Champs down at number 8 on their trio ranking, but Booker and Aiden still have a shot to be the next Kobe and Shaq. Are you year. on donate chair? If they embrace their greatness, after Devin Booker said he should never be compared to Kobe, the Suns lost every game in the finals after that, in all seriousness, despite the fact that CP3 will be 37 by next year's playoffs, Phoenix will have another shot at pleasing the Suns in four guy. Number four, Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. This ranking's based off the current value of these trios, but even though Curry, Thompson, and Green are in the back half of their primes, with Klay coming off two major surgeries, it still wouldn't be right to rank them any lower than fourth. During the 2018-19 campaign, the Bay Area's trio posted a plus 15 net rating over 1,232 minutes on the floor together. The roster overhaul since then has been significant, with, of course, Durant going to Brooklyn. Having said that, the Splash Brothers, along with the DPOY Draymond's two-way impact, that was always the focal point of Golden State's system. Last year, Curry was third in MVP voting. Green was first team all defense for a fifth straight year. It's not like these two have aged, but the question will be, can Klay Thompson regain vintage form? If the answer is yes, Golden State could be right back in the championship picture. Number three, Giannis Adetokounmpo, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday. Bucks fans are wondering why this trio isn't ranked number one. I can already feel it. And that's simply because Drew Holiday's slight offensive struggles in the 2021 Finals. Having said that, Drew did prove himself as the best point guard defender in basketball. Middleton was extremely clutch, and a man who many regard as the best player in the world, Giannis Adetokounmpo, had an all-time great playoff run. However, the Bucks lost two crucial role players in P.J. Tucker and Bryn Forbes in free agency, so more responsibility will be placed on Middleton and Holiday. They should handle it fine, but when the grind of the seven-month journey kicks in during the later rounds, that could be an issue. Middleton's obviously going to be one of the better All-Stars for years to come, but can he stay consistent in the playoffs? That's something I worry about. Still a dynamic trio who will be in Brooklyn's way for a long time. Number two, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. Laker fans are looking for LBJ, AD, and Russ to take them to the franchise's 18th title, and they'll have a damn good shot. LA's electricity in transition will be incredible to watch. Westbrook's in eighth gear at all times. Of course, LeBron's a freight train with his full head of steam attacks, and the rim running plus trailing threes from the brow, that's what the Lakers' opponents are going to have to keep up with in 21-22. The Lakers were hungry to find a legitimate third option after last season's 24th place finish in offensive efficiency. Among all teams that made the playoffs and play-in tournament, LA had the worst offense among any of them. A lot of that can be chalked up to Anthony Davis missing time and LeBron playing on bad ankles. We saw how overpowering Davis and James were in the bubble. In terms of Westbrook's addition, LeBron's leadership should have a great impact on him. And don't forget, Russ is a great defender, so he'll help on that end of the floor. Honorable mention before number one to Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, and Michael Porter Jr. of the Denver Nuggets. 
I had them at number 10 on this list initially, but I just thought with Jamal's injury and the fact that Porter Jr.'s still yet to reach star status, I'd leave them off. Regardless, Denver's top heavy attack is one of the best in the game. Number one, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden. Of course, everything comes down to health and rhythm for Brooklyn, but at full strength, there's no denying that KD, Uncle Drew, and The Beard are not only the greatest trio in basketball right now, but one of the greatest assemblies of talent ever. The hype for the Nets lives on, despite their second round loss to the likable, feisty, and damn talented Milwaukee Bucks. The Nets were 6-1 at one point in the 2021 playoffs, nearly taking a 3-0 lead against the eventual champions. With Harden's hamstring injury in Game 1 against the Bucks, and Kyrie landing on Giannis's ankle in Game 3, Durant carrying the team to the East Finals proved to be too much of a task for the Slim Reaper. However, having three all-time great shot creators who've at least shown flashes of coexisting is enough for the Nets to rank first. Harden silenced many of the quote, there's only one ball critics by adapting a pass first mentality and averaging an NBA second best 10.8 dimes. In the playoffs, in very limited time on the floor at the same time, the Nets trio posted an insane 119.6 points per 100 possessions and contributed 78.4 points, 22.5 assists, and 7.9 threes per contest. That's why, where things currently stand, the Nets are the odds-on favorite to win the title. That's just my take though, let me know yours down below, hope you have a great day, D-Flow signing off.